Often as database administrators, we can be perhaps a little, what's the term, uh, gung-ho when it comes to trying to monitor the health and state of our database. For example, sometimes I'll log on and I get a warning from some alerting tool that says, yes, you've got a long running session on your database. I jump in, I look at VDollar session, and I can see that one of my sessions has been active for about two hours. 7,300 seconds is over two hours. The first thing I might rush in and do is say, okay, yep, I'm gonna kill that session because obviously it must be hurting my server, it must be hurting my IO, but that is not necessarily the case. Just because a session is active doesn't necessarily mean it is actively burning CPU on your system. In fact, if we modify this query slightly to take into account the locking columns, we can see that it actually is blocked. It's trying to get access to a resource, typically a row in a table, and someone else has it. It's funny how people are critical about databases saying, oh, we have all these blocking locks and stuff like that. But of course, that's by design. We don't want multiple people changing the same data at the same time. Otherwise, we have data corruptions all over the place. We may as well just go back to using flat files and VI to edit our data. Blocking is an essential part of controlling data integrity. It's only when blocks start hanging around for way too long that we start getting into problems. If I extend this query a little bit to see who is causing the blocking, I can see in this particular case, session 46 is being blocked by session 39, who has done a select for update recently. If you want to avoid these locks that might last forever, one of the changes in syntax you might want to consider is using the wait facility on select for update. By default, select for update will attempt to lock a row and wait forever. It will continually sit there waiting to see if that resource has become free. Select for update with the optional wait clause, in this case, for example, wait 60, says I will try to get this lock for up to 60 seconds and then I'll return an error back to the application. You might be thinking, well, have we really gained anything? Because here I had, I was waiting for a lock and now I'm just having my application or my program crash with an error going back to the user. Surely that's just six of one and a half dozen of the other. The difference is if you're going to wait for a lock forever, well, forever's a long time and the database will never ever time out. That will simply continue on. And the problem that often arises is in a typical concurrent user system, one person will be looking for a lock and might get blocked. But in their own session, they may have already opened up some other transactions, other locks on other objects. You can see here that session 39, which was originally we would call the victim, they're trying to get a lock and are blocked. Well, they had locks on other objects as well. And so sessions 46, 56, and 58, they're now blocked on session 39. You get this cascading sort of uh, tsunami of trouble brewing in your database. Session 62 and 63 are blocked on 46. Session 76 is blocked on 62. The moment some transactions have locks and then can't get further locks, you create this snowstorm, this avalanche effect that could bring your entire server to its knees. So in my view, it's much better even if you can't get a lock rather than wait forever, it's better to actually time out and die. One of the good things with using select for update wait is when you do get a lock timeout, you get a different error message number to the standard select for update no wait errors. As a result, you can now create a DDL trigger on that particular error code should you wish to. So in this case, I'm checking if the error is 30,006 and hopefully if my application is well instrumented, I can actually look up who is causing the problems. And in this case, I've made a bit of a joke here. It might be able to actually send back to the uh, calling environment that yes, by the way, you couldn't get a lock because this particular user, myself in this particular office on this phone extension is causing you some problems. I, I call that empowering the users. I did, as a DBA, I won't need to get involved here. Whoever's getting this locking problem will be able to phone the cause and have them sort of that hopefully amongst themselves, hopefully in a pleasant and dignified fashion. Thus, rather than waiting forever for locks, code your applications to have select for update with a wait clause just to guarantee against cascading lock disasters in your database.